I have an 11 week old BC Zoe who will play fine then out of nowhere growl sounds aggressive and attack legs. Also when walking outside to use the potty if she hears another dog bark and doesn't have to see it she still gets scared and will either get tense or bark or freak out and want to escape. What are some ways to control this? Yeah puppies can really act aggressive sometimes and that's kind of a puppy thing and quite often it's because they're overtired and it won't seem like it to them it'll seem like they still want to keep going and you put them in a crate and they will cry for a little while but you'll often find that they will just fall asleep and so honestly puppy biting issues i have a video about puppy biting which i'll post here i think i may have posted it already puppies really do need to nap a lot and with the other dog barking the best thing that you can do is just remove your dog from the situation take your dog away because you don't want your dog to have to interact with something super scary at such a young age and really at any age we want to build confidence with our dogs and i realize there are sometimes difficult situations where you may have a neighbor's dog that constantly barks and stresses your dog out a little bit i had a similar situation with a dog that was running to the fence often and then my dog would react to that and now my dog will look to that fence constantly and is vigilant about the fence and it's actually created a bit of an issue for my dog but wherever you can try to just take them away from the thing that they're afraid of initially and work on their confidence the best way to work on dog behaviors is not in the situation it's preparing for the situation and so it sounds like your puppy needs some confidence building i will be doing some videos about confidence building exercises and i'll be doing a shorts video about novelty boxes i'll probably do it in the next little while so keep an eye out for that basically that's one confidence building exercise so i'll tell you a little bit of a story my dog skiing got to a point where he was so worried about the neighbor dogs and about wildlife in my property that he just would not potty outside and i actually did a video about that issue <laughs> and I'll post it right here. He got to a point where he was so worried about the neighbor's dogs barking or any sounds outdoors that he just would hold it until he was like ready to explode. And so I actually ended up building a fenced area for him. But honestly, the best solution for that was just taking him into an area where I know it's the most quiet in the property and just letting him take his time and sniff things out when he's not afraid that was actually the best way of dealing with his potty training issues but i would definitely suggest doing a lot of exercises that build confidence and those are things that involve some sounds or new textures and just for your dog to have a lot of fun if your dog is having fun they're generally building some confidence next question from sandy i have a border collie five months wow that's a fun age <laughs> he's brown but his color is called red when choosing food what are the best ingredients to look for in this breed is there a difference in attitude between male and female food is one of those hot topics that people tend to disagree about a lot there are the people that really believe in raw feeding and there are people that believe in organic or you know whatever they specifically believe in i do actually make dog food for my dogs but because most of my feeding happens during training i have adapted my ingredients to be things that i can train with for a puppy though you really want to make sure that they're getting their proper nutrients so for my puppy i feed him a specific puppy kibble but i also do give him a variety of other things he gets some raw bones he also gets chicken and turkey sometimes beef my dogs will get dehydrated pumpkins sometimes. One of the things I love to feed my dogs is smelt. I have a dehydrator. I love my dehydrator. I dehydrate smelt. I dehydrate apples. I dehydrate yams. And these can all be cut up into little pieces. Um, the smelt is actually pretty small to begin with. And you can use that for training treats. So I tend to pick a lot of things that I can train with. But as I said, with puppies, you really want to make sure that you're giving your puppies the proper nutrients. And so I would 
recommend using a specific puppy kibble. I actually use a puppy kibble that's recommended by my vet. And with my homemade dog food, which is primarily a broth, I use that in a slow feeder bowl, which is a little more challenging to eat from because I just don't like to give them their food in a plain old bowl to gobble down because all that food has so much value to it. Food can be used for calming, it can be used for training, it can be used for fun. So I try to use food for my dogs in the best way that I possibly can. But having said that, my dogs do take certain supplements and so I use my broth to contain the supplements and that's kind of something that I'll usually give my dogs twice a day. To make my broth I usually use like a turkey carcass or chicken carcasses and I will add a whole bunch of different vegetables, cabbage, I'll sometimes buy the coleslaw mix and throw in a bag of that or I will also use things like kale broccoli and I will put in pumpkin, yams, sometimes I'll add some potatoes or squash or zucchini. I do use some specific recipes that I have from a dog health cookbook but really this broth is a portion of my dog's food intake so I'm not too concerned if it's exactly perfect. For a puppy you really want to make sure they're getting adequate nutrition and so even if you don't get the specific vet brand from the vet sometimes they will give you specific brand names that they believe are more high quality. And of course this is where the debate comes in but basically mine is a little bit of a mix of a few things so yeah a little bit of raw well, it's kind of really more like a dog stew I guess and lots of um, small items that I use for training. Another question with multiple questions. Number one is it safe to get a BC puppy during the pandemic even though I'm vaccinated? Yes, it should be safe. Now, I'm not a COVID expert and there have been some dogs that have tested positive for COVID, but I'm not aware of any dogs that have actually transferred COVID to anyone else. And the numbers of dogs who have tested positive for COVID are pretty rare as far as I know at the moment. Anyways, I adopted a dog during the pandemic and I was not at all worried about it. Number two, how much socialization does BC Puppy need? Now that's the interesting thing. I actually saw a little pie chart recently and I'm gonna see if I can find that now and read it to you because there's an idea that dogs have to meet a certain number of people and a certain number of time and there's a lot of pressure for people to introduce their dogs to new people. And yeah, while COVID does pose a few limitations on that, it's not as important as you might think. Okay, so I'm just going to read you what this pie chart says. This is like posted from a friend who I trust her sources of information. So what socialization actually is or should be. Now, focus around animals, 6.3%. Sounds, 15%. Floors, 15%. Novel sites, 15%. Novel buildings or environments, 15%. Meeting dogs, 2.5%. Meeting humans, 6.3%. Focus around humans, 12.5%. Focus around dogs, 12.5%. I would like to credit that pie chart if I can find out who created it. But basically, what it's mostly saying is a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and a lot of focus training. And actually the truth is that sometimes the more we try to socialize, the more we can end up having something go wrong. So with Skeen, he had actually about three different incidents of dogs that were not friendly that actually ended up scaring him quite a bit. And when I look back now from his little puppy mind, he was getting the message that dogs are scary. And so when we sometimes think we're trying to do the right thing by socializing dogs, if they end up in a bad situation, it actually can backfire on us. And so it's not to say that your dog should never be around other dogs. We don't want to hide them away from the world, but we also don't have to force the situation and we want to really make sure we expose them to really positive things. And so, like I said before, we're going to do training that increases confidence and that increases optimism. And we'll do a lot of training that is based on teaching focus. Number three, how long can I leave a puppy at home? I'm a full-time PhD student. Do you still recommend me getting a BC puppy or do you think a lab puppy works better? I prefer BC but girlfriend accepts BC and lab. 
I actually think for any puppy, if you really don't have the time to focus on them, it's probably better to wait until you're finished your PhD. And I really don't think it matters whether it's a lab puppy or a border collie. I've actually had both and my lab puppy was <laughs> was a little more challenging than most of my border collies so I wouldn't say that labs are necessarily easier as puppies especially. My lab was like a puppy until he was about three years old. A really young puppy needs to be let out frequently and the amount really depends on the age group. The younger the more often they really need to get out. They have very tiny bladders they can generally get through a few hours in the night, but during the daytime, it's usually on the hour, sometimes every half hour that I was letting my puppy out. So I just think that when you get a puppy, it's kind of like getting an infant and you really have to have a little bit of time to put into the infant <laughs> or the crazy little puppy that you're thinking of bringing home. If a BC puppy doesn't get enough workout, are they easy to get depressed? And if so, how should I deal with this issue? Yeah, if, if a dog, period, just doesn't get enough attention or exercise, sure, they can get depressed, they can get very depressed. And so the first thing is to really think about whether a dog is suitable for your lifestyle. And honestly, sometimes it's just not the right time in a person's life. If, if you're worried about things like that, about the dog being alone long periods of time, then you may have good reason to be thinking about that. They do need mental stimulation and they do need exercise. Basically, I would say that the time to get a dog is when you know that you have some time to focus on the dog and that you have some time to do training and you have some time to do some exercise with the dog and really give quality time to the dog. It's really important to give that dog a little bit extra time, especially in the beginning. And if it's just you on your own, or if it's two of you, sometimes that can work out, you can rotate. But if the dog's gonna be left for hours upon hours, then it's probably not a good choice to be getting a dog at that time in your life. What is the budget? I should be expecting to get a BC puppy, including the price to get a puppy, insurance, food, treats, toys, medical bill, etc and lives in Houston, Texas. Uh, that can vary a lot. Uh, dogs can be expensive. You know, I, I've i had a young dog that ended up having tooth surgery, which cost me a couple of thousand dollars. Um, dogs themselves, they vary in price, depends on the breeder. That's something you really have to check on with breeders. Rescue dogs can sometimes cost less, but again, there's neutering or spaying and vaccinations. There's the initial medical bills. I can't really give you a specific estimate. It's just, it's always whatever you think it is plus more. <laughs> dogs can be expensive. And number six, will they become aggressive and get me in trouble? Well, dogs are really good at getting you in trouble. I can tell you that much. <laughs> aggressive, I don't know. It depends on how you interpret aggression, but dogs are dogs and they will behave like dogs. And so, Will they sometimes be reactive? Sure, because a reactive dog is a dog that is alive. <laughs> and if a dog is not reactive, then they may not be alive. So we do, we like reactive dogs, but will they get you in trouble? Yeah, quite possibly. <laughs> My dogs always get me into trouble. Okay. But again, it depends on how you define trouble. Oh, you I think dogs just in general are trouble. <laughs> yeah. But it's a good kind of trouble. I think. Are they really loud and might they annoy my neighbors? Yes, puppies will definitely cry and will they know your neighbors? Probably, <laughs> if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> yeah, they can do that. Training takes time and when you have a young pup especially or any new dog, they can vocalize and it's something you need to be around to work on initially. So I would say yes. And then it says, I know these questions make me seem like a bad person, but please believe me, I'm not a bad person. I know you're not a bad person. I just want to know everything before I make this commitment. I've actually been thinking about getting a BC puppy for one year and a half and I've done a lot of research. Oh, I totally get that you're not a bad person and it's just, it's brave to ask. Honestly, dogs are challenging. And you know, if you're nervous about getting a dog, I mean, it's for good reason because every time I've gotten a dog, I've had a new challenge. It's something that I don't predict. It's something that I don't expect and it's something new and so if you're prepared to learn a lot and be challenged and have a lot of patience then 
yeah, getting a dog can be a good thing. But in the beginning, you really do need the time for training and bonding. And if you don't have the time, then maybe it's just worth putting it off a little bit longer and doing a bit more research, learning more about the costs and the breed behaviors, talking to people that have border collies, and looking at lots of videos on YouTube and you'll get more of an idea. And I just really suggest being ready for a lot of chaos when you first get a puppy because that's what puppies are. And what difference does the gender of the puppy make for a BC? I think someone else asked that as well. Some males are easygoing, some females are easygoing. I've had different personalities, male and female, and I wouldn't say that one is more easygoing than the other, or easier to train than the other. Sometimes, I think sometimes the girls can mature a little bit more quickly, but that's not always true either. It really depends on the individual dog. Another question from Jeanette. I have a one year and five months old male border collie. He started socialization until 10 months old, so he's not aggressive, but he barks and chases every car he sees and every little kid or person who is running. Number one, can this behavior change or stop for better? Number two, could he develop aggressiveness? Number three, is it better if he changes the environment? I mean, if he changes the owner, and instead of a city would be happier in a ranch. You know, this is actually a common question and I had problems with one of my dogs. It was actually my dog Keegan when he was really young and you wouldn't believe the number of people that told me that he should go live on a farm and <laughs> guess what? I live on a farm. <laughs> yeah, really. And honestly, the kind of problems that your dog might have in the city can be equally as challenging on a farm. So for example, things like chase, they may chase animals, they may chase equipment. For example, my dog Skeen is nervous of the neighbor's goats. He's nervous of other neighbor's cows. We have deer that come running through that gets him worked up. So I would say that giving your dog to a farm is not going to solve anything at all. Although people like to think that, a farm is just a space and it's just a different space with different sounds. But border collies can adapt if we we're willing to do the work. And so the first question, barking and chasing, can this behavior change or stop for the better? Yes, it can. And it needs specific kinds of training. Number two, could he develop aggressiveness? All dogs can be reactive. And so what we really want them to do is to disengage. And so first of all, we take them out of the situations where they're chasing, whether it's the cars, the kids, we take them away from those situations and we train them in calmer environments. And as they start to improve, then we can expose them to a little bit more. But definitely it can change. It has to happen a little bit at a time and with a lot of distance from whatever the triggers are. So for example, if your border collie has kids running around and around and around, that's gonna be very triggering and very difficult for a little border collie's brain. So we wanna give a dog space from that type of situation so they don't get overstimulated. So basically, if we're willing to do the work with our dog, we can generally change a lot of behaviors. There's so much we can do with dogs. The difficult part is it doesn't happen overnight. And there are trainers who will say that they can change things overnight. And you know, sometimes you can use force and force a dog to change behavior. But if you're interested in relationship building, then that's not the approach I would take. So the approach I would take with relationship building is small increments every day moving forward. And you'd be surprised at how dramatic eventually the changes can be. And it's the commitment, it's like, putting a little bit of money away every day in your bank account and how that starts to build up and eventually it starts to make interest. Well, it's the same thing with your dog. You put a little bit of training every day, a few times a day, a little bit of positive training, a little bit of fun, a little bit of confidence building, and then each day your dog grows a bit more confident. So you, what you have to ask yourself is, am I building that confidence for my dog each day? And am I willing to do the training that it takes to build that confidence for my dog? And it can be frustrating. I know, I mean, I have had my share of dogs that are not confident and it does take some time, but the results with training over time can be very dramatic in a good way. And here is the last question, which is actually three questions in one. <laughs> First question is, do border collies get along with other animals and babies? Question two, can you leave a border collie alone for a few hours? Question three, are border collies a couch potato? 
Number one, Border Collies, do they get along with animals and babies? They can, but like I said, the issue with Border Collies and children is that Border Collies are often interested in chase and motion and kids are little motion makers. And so you have to determine whether that's gonna be a constant trigger for your Border Collie. And if it is, then Sometimes it's not the right scenario for a Border Collie, but there are plenty of Border Collies that do get along with children. And I, in fact, grew up with a Border Collie from the time I was five years old until I was in high school. Mind you, the dog did used to hurt us into bed at night, but yeah, it can be done with the right commitment and the right management and making sure that the dog has a lot of calm time away from a lot of action and noise as well because puppies and dogs do need that as well. Number two, can you leave a Border Collie alone for a few hours? Yes, you can leave Border Collies alone for a few hours, but some Border Collies do have separation anxiety issues, and so it depends on the particular dog how challenging that will be. I had a herding dog, he wasn't a Border Collie, but I used to work full time, which was an eight to nine hour day. He used to go out in the morning, I did my morning walk, my training, and then I would have my work day, I would go home at lunch quite often, and at the end of the day, when I saw my dog, the day began for my dog. So you can work out a schedule for your particular dog, but in the very beginning, you will have to probably either do a dog daycare or have a dog walker or have someone checking in on your dog, and especially if it's a puppy, it's just not fair to a puppy to be left because they actually have to go potty. And I do talk a little bit about age and how long a dog can hold it in this puppy video here. So if you want to have a look, there is a section that talks about how long puppies can hold it. Okay, our Border Collies a couch potato. Um, <laughs> none of my Border Collies have ever been couch potatoes, but they can be calm and relaxed and they can be snuggly. Border Collies can really be quite cuddly and affectionate and when they're sleeping sure they can enjoy the couch just like we can and just like every person is a little bit different also every border collie is a little bit different so some are higher energy some are a little bit lower energy generally i would not describe border collies as couch potatoes but there's always exceptions to every rule. So I hope that's given you some insights and answered a few of your questions. And if not, then stay tuned because there are more videos to come and I will see you in the next one.